Welcome to our morning devotions, our final one today in the wee series on Christmas trees, trees in the Bible which relate to the Christian, uh, to the Christmas message. I get apologies, the light problem today, uh, the sun is so bright, it's it's sort of coming and clouds coming, it's sort of coming and going, so hopefully you can still see me all right. But it's lovely to have the sun coming in, so we'll not complain about the sun. So we're thinking today of the final Christmas tree, which is the tree of life. Now we first come across the tree of life in Genesis chapters 2 and 3. Genesis in 2, there's two trees that are named in the Garden of Eden. There's the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which Adam and Eve were not allowed to eat from. But there was the tree of life that they were allowed to eat from. It's a tree which speaks of eternal life, which is to be found in God. Now, the problem was that when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and basically decided we'll make our own rules of life, they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. And one of the reasons for that is they were cast away from the tree of life. Eternal life was taken from them because of their sin. And we read in Genesis chapter 3 of Cherubim, these awesome angels not like the wee cherubs that are pictured these wee cuddly creatures angels in the bible were always terrifying they were awesome creatures that reflected the glory of god and these cherubim were angels which had flaming swords guarding the way to the tree of life you also meet the cherubim in the ark of the covenant garden god's holy presence they were on the the temple curtain speaking of how they guarded that which is holy to god so now there was this barrier to the tree of life because of the sin of Adam and Eve, which we all have inherited. But the tree of life, it disappears from the Bible, but it is restored in Revelation 22 when there's the new heavens and the new earth. And let me read about it and the blessing of the tree of life in the last book of the Bible, Revelation 22. John the Apostle says, Then the angel showed me the, the river of the water of life. This is a, a great river that comes from the throne of God. Bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. Through the middle of the street of the city. That's a New Jerusalem, which is a picture of the people of God. Also, on other side of the river, the tree of life. With its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. And what this tree of life with its great blessing, which is for the healing of the nations, what it tells us is that Jesus comes into this world at Christmas time. And the Christmas tree points to Jesus coming. But the tree of life tells us that Jesus has come to give us access to the tree of life. Access which was denied after the sin of Adam and Eve in Genesis 3 is now allowed again. And this access to the tree of life takes away all cursing. So the world to come, the new heavens and new earth, which Jesus is going to bring at the end of this world, brings in this new world for his people. There'll be no cursing. It speaks of how this tree will have fruit every month of the year, different fruit every it speaks of a of a blessing of which is far beyond even what is experienced by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And so it's speaking of the world to come, of the, a blessing and a richness which is beyond anything that we can imagine, anything we experience. But this is what Jesus has come into the world to give. Not just to take our sin so we'll be rescued from hell. He takes our sin so we will access the new heavens and new earth. We'll access the tree of life. We'll access a life of blessing in the world to come beyond anything that we can imagine. I, I love quoting the late Reverend William Still. Mr. Still spoke at one time about how he would have in the world to come a new body because he says this old body of mine couldn't cope with the joy that is coming for the people of God in the world to come. And that's what the tree of life speaks about, a blessing, a joy, a richness of life beyond anything we can imagine. Not that we deserve it, 
but it's something that would be purchased of Jesus by Jesus. Look at what access, how we can access this. It says in Revelation 22 and says this in verse 14, Blessed are those who wash their robes so they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside of the dogs and sorcerers, the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. So those who will have access to the tree of life are those who are washed. Think back to Revelation 7. A great multitude in heaven in white robes. Who are they? Those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. That's a disgusting picture. Imagine being washed in blood of lambs. Uh, being washed in a bath of blood. It's disgusting, isn't it? You think of the sacrificial system in the Old Testament. It was disgusting. It was terrible. It speaks of how sin is terrible. It speaks of how there has to be a, a drastic answer to sin. A drastic solution. And that solution is the death of Jesus, the Lamb of God on the cross of Calvary. And the only way that you and I can be washed, the only way that you and I can have access to this tree of life and blessing which is beyond our imagination in the world to come is through the blood of Jesus, through his sacrifice on the cross. Not by your good deeds. If you think you'll get to heaven by your good deeds, you're mocking Jesus. If you think you can get to heaven by your religion, by being a, a Presbyterian or a Church of Ireland or Methodist or Roman Catholic, you're mocking the death of Jesus. The only way you can get to heaven is through the blood of the Lamb, through indeed trusting in him. The only way you can get to heaven is through the gospel of Jesus Christ, this message of salvation. The book of Revelation ends with a warning to us that we cannot play with this gospel. And at the end of this revelation, at the end of this last book of the Bible, it says this. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to them the plagues described in this book. Many plagues spoken of in the book of Revelation. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life. And the holy city, which are described in this book. When the Bible was given by God, when it was given through the prophets and the apostles, like Paul and Peter and John and so forth, it is the perfect word of God, the perfect law of God. And that word is not to be added to, you're not to add anything to it. You're not to take anything from it. You have to accept the word as it is originally given through the prophets and the apostles. And there's a solemn warning here. You're not to add to it. You're not to take it. In other words, we're not to change the gospel message. We're not to manipulate the gospel. The Christian life is not like a buffet that you can accept what you want and reject what you want. You have to take the word and the whole word. You have to take Jesus and the whole Jesus, embracing him as your saviour, embracing him as your Lord. To take the truth and the whole truth of the gospel. It's only the full gospel of Jesus. The Jesus who's come and lived that perfect life and died on the cross for the sin of his people and rose on the third day and is coming back again to judge this world. You have to embrace that whole Jesus. Embrace the whole truth. People are trying to twist the Bible today. It speaks about how the sexually immoral will not have a place in the tree of life. You have to repent of your sin. You have to turn from all sin. It doesn't mean we're perfect. But it does mean we're serious in turning away from sin. And embracing this Jesus as our saviour. As our Lord. For those who do that. We'll have the tree of life, the brass Christmas tree of all. The tree of life which brings eternal blessing beyond what we can imagine. Amen.